good, so absolutely awesome that it's going to turn it into your lucky day. It's going, and in fact, it is your lucky day. You get to see the one and only, and he can be seen at the Moody Big Comedy Club. He does the uh, announcing and uh, various various other yeah. things. Yeah, Various and sundry things. <laughs> really? Oh, my career is on fucking fire right now. What are these like toilets? Oh. <laughs> this is going to be a very exciting year for me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was asked to be best man at my friend Corey Douglas's wedding. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Corey couldn't be here tonight because he has just as many people at his house to bore to death. Um, I'm really excited about being his best man, but I really do hope it goes better than the last time I was best man. Last year, my buddy Scott Black married a woman named Victoria Workman. Now remember those names, this is important to the story. I had to go in for a tux fitting. Walked into the store and was greeted from across the room, from across the store, from by a tall African American fellow, where he asked me, he's going like, "Okay, which wedding were you a part of?" And I was going like, "Black workman." Okay. Mm. <laughs> Everybody in the store was just like. <gasps> <laughs> I didn't think that was anything that could make an NC measurement any more awkward, but there you go. Dude got a little aggressive. Is just. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking down and I'm just. You want to call me a honky just to feel like you got even or something? You know, Scott told me. Uh, the thing about being best man is the only real responsibility is planning the bachelor party. And Scott came up to me. Uh, beforehand and said, well, here's the thing. I quit drinking and I don't like strip clubs. And I'm like, dude, you just took away the two things that make it a bachelor party. Okay, this is like ordering a pizza with no crust or sauce. It's just a pile of cheese at this point. <laughs> but I understand where what his thing about strip clubs. I'm not a big fan either. I never understood the concept. I mean, this is like, why pay good money to look at boobs when I could go to any bar and find a woman with equally low self-esteem <laughs> and just apply myself and I might actually get to touch her boobs. Mm. Yeah. I've never had fun at a strip club, ever. Well, I actually, oh my God. <laughs> my God. Oh, come on, like I need the fucking mic with this many people. Who cut the mic? Um, <laughs> now, actually, I did have fun once at a strip club, but it was for all the wrong reasons. I was back in my hometown hanging out with some friends. We decided to go to this one strip club. And as soon as we walked in, I immediately recognized the girl on stage as a girl who shot me down in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> and she came out to our table later to try to sell us a lap dance. She's going like, don't I know you from somewhere? It's going like, yeah, you turned me down for prom. Here's a dollar. <laughs> I'm calling up all my other, other high school buddies, just going like, hey, remember how you said you'd give anything to see Lisa Fields naked? <laughs> yeah, $5 cover, bitch. Get your ass down there. <sighs> By far, the worst strip club I ever went to was actually my first experience there uh, at any strip club. I was 19 years old, and I was on the French Quarter in New Orleans. I was on Bourbon Street on Christmas night. <laughs> Place was dead, man. Even the bums were off the streets by 1030. And no place was car charging a cover. No place was checking IDs. They were just waving me in, and I'm going like, wait, wait. I'm just not going to go into any place here. I'm going to try to find someplace classy. But trying to find a classy joint on Bourbon Street is like trying to find a library in Alabama, you know? <laughs> sure, you're going to be able to find one, but is it going to be worth the effort? Really? So I finally decide on this one place. I go inside, go up to the bar, order myself a $20 bottle of Bud Light, and turn around to watch the show. Now! 
You think of the caliber of skank is requ that's required of a strip club on Bourbon Street. Let's set your expectations right about here. Now imagine the ones that didn't need time off for the holidays. Just keep lowering those expectations. <laughs> I turned around from the bar to watch the show and it looked like they were reenacting the shower, sheet, the shower scene from Schindler's List. Say that three times. <laughs> it was just an ocean of track marks, cold sores, and C-section scars as far as the eye could see. I didn't want to tip them. I wanted to feed them. It was that bad. But that's not even the worst part. The worst part is I felt a hand on my shoulder. I didn't want to look. But I did. And what did I see but Beetlejuice in a glitter bra? <laughs> Looking up at me, she's just smiling and she's missing her four front teeth. Oh. I don't know how many people how many people like to bowl, but she was a walking, talking 7-10 split. <laughs> She's looking up at me like, you want to go back to the champagne room? <laughs> I'm like, I want to get the fuck out of here. I'll get my coat alone. Slow your roll there, Smeagol. <laughs> I've always wanted to go back to that club just to see if they still have that me-shaped hole in the wall. Just <laughs> Me-shaped. <laughs> oh, I'm going to change gears here. I'm a big fan of movies. Yeah. I love watching movies. I watch movies at home. I've got a three-disc DVD changer in my house that is, uh, I love it. I love it. It's got the greatest feature ever. It's a shuffle button. Nice. I can put in two different movies. If I've got like four hours to kill, I'll put in two different movies, hit shuffle, and watch them mash together as one really long one. <laughs> it's great. Like the other day, I was watching Ferris Bueller's Dog Day Afternoon. That was a fun one. <laughs> Became a movie about a kid who plays hooky from school, but nobody's concerned at all because Al Pacino's robbing a bank. <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Showgirls got a little bit weird. <laughs> By far my favorite is Willy Wonka and the Shawshank Redemption. That was a great one right there. So you hear that Morgan Freeman narration. It's like, I wish I could tell you that Andy fought the good fight. And the Oompa Loompas let him be. But the Chocolate Factory is no fairy tale world. Now, to be outdone, a buddy of mine, he has a 100-disc DVD changer, and that was great, because we just threw in a whole bunch of movies. Spent the entire weekend watching Bride of the Chronicles of the Return of the Final Chapter of the Next Generation's Electric Boogaloo Revenge on Judgment Day versus the Undiscovered Country's Temple of Doom Citizens on Patrol Who Loved Me on the Move, reloaded with a vengeance beyond Thunderdome rides again. <laughs> yeah. And this time, it's personal. That is a tough joke to do in one breath. I know. I'm a pack a day yeah. smoker. That is an endurance that. trial. Mm -hmm. I am seeing so many colors right now on that short of breath. Uh, he can swallow a dick alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quit drinking for about a year and a half. That was fun. It's not that I was a serious alcoholic, it's just that, uh, well, there was one night I went on a pretty serious bender and found out later I may have caused a little bit of an accident. Oh. Baby girl, six pounds, nine ounces. Um, you know, you know. That'll sober your ass up pretty quick right there. <laughs> the way I looked at it at the time is going like, hey, if I'm going to walk away from a drunken one-night stand with a permanent souvenir, a baby is the one you really want to have, you know? Yeah! I'll take diaper rash over canker sores any day of the week, man. But I was real excited about it, man. I was going to be a dad, and then after a few months, we got the DNA test back negative, and it's like, wow! <laughs> this is a hell of a dress rehearsal for when I finally get my shit together. Okay. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I just never thought he'd choose Maury Povich as his messenger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would have stayed in the baby's life had the mother not been completely insane. 
And I'm not just being cute. Uh, she was diagnosed paranoid, delusional, schizophrenic with antisocial personality disorder. So, yay! I slept with a sociopath. King, my ass. That means for the rest of my life, whenever some guy says, man, my ex-girlfriend was crazy, I was going like, yeah, right. So like, did yours ever send you a Valentine's Day card? Homemade Valentine's Day card? In October? 